I'm looking for Vinny Iyer. It's Mike Richards from RawMikeRichards.com. Hey, Vinny, how you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us here this morning. You're, you're you're very solid on that. I see this morning. You're just, you're good. You're you're yeah. you're certainly better than it's Monday. It's, you're, a, it's <laughs> a start, right? I mean, Vinny, I guess you're better than the uh, radio host at W E E I. Who can I just can't believe that someone is a rights holder. And it's Tom Brady. I mean, there's so many levels to this, and I understand. Uh, can we verify that he's just uh, he's just been fired? Yeah. Are you familiar with this, uh, Vinny? Yeah, I, I didn't know about the firing. I knew about the incident, but I didn't know what they had done yet. So they just did that. It I, apparently just uh, it just came down now, and I'm looking at him thinking, look, we've all worked for for at least Dave and I for for you know radio stations uh, that have uh, affiliations, if not ownership and, and rights to a team. But you know, you're talking about Tom Brady here. I mean, I don't care if if uh, you're a radio station in Moscow, you're probably not going to take a shot at his five year old daughter. I just thought it was very strange, but you know, to to, to talk something that probably is more relevant, um, I always at least, and again, this is from a like literally a third-party observer looking from afar. But it seems to me that Tom's relationship with the media, he always seems very forthcoming. He always seems very honest about what he wants to talk about. And he always seems to, for the time that you get with him, uh, make the time decent. He doesn't give you yes and no. I would think amongst the journalists and and reporters, he must have a pretty decent uh, reputation, does he not? Yeah, definitely. And when you look, and you'll see it this week at the Super Bowl press conferences, if you ask a question and he somewhat knows you or you say what your organization and name is, he's going to say your name back to you, which you don't get very often. You just get, you'll just keep saying it over and over And when you hear that. And I remember I can share this story from a long time ago when uh, he was a draft prospect in 2000, and he was not a high-rated prospect at the time, but I was assigned to do a little story on him. And, and I'm about Tom Brady's age, I'll admit. I'm a little bit older than him, but – that he answered the phone and said, how are you doing, Mr. Iyer? And I was, like, blown away by it. That <laughs> he's a guy that's probably my age, and he's calling me Mr. Like, I'm just starting my job here at Sporting News, and I'm talking to a guy that's uh, right uh, one year behind me, and he's calling me Mr. So he's always been very respectful when you look at that, and uh, he's going to do things in the right way. And I think it's fair not to bring in his uh, family into any of this. Well, uh, I, I was explaining as we were going in and to try to describe exactly, you know, the the level of that uh, of uh, of that indiscretion. But quite honestly, when I try to look at and again, you know, the arguments of greatest of all time, greatest by position, but I just it's hard to make a comparison to a guy that's done what he has in the you know the t- the t- time that we've been alive on this planet to see it unfold. And I know you're going to hear other names like obviously John Unitas is going to come up, or uh, whether it's uh, you know. Uh, all the names that come up when you have arguments about great quarterbacks, but I just don't know in this day and age that you're ever going to see a guy literally make reservations in every city that the championship is in for like 10 years in that time span because he's going to be there at least 8 out of the 10. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know what the comparison is. Well, I think you have to go beyond that. I wrote a little bit about that last year before this comeback, and so he added to that, but when you look at it, I think he's already the greatest NFL player of all time because of all the pressures of trying to do it and having two separate eras of domination here. With If he does the six rings here and uh, doing like three and four years type uh, twice, I mean, that's just special that you don't usually get that second cycle of championships. And when you look at the bigger picture, I, I think about one guy that won this weekend is Roger Federer. You start to look at not just greatest now, you start to look greatest in relation to other athletes of all time. And you got to start putting Tom Brady in that conversation. You was team Michael Jordan that regard, but he's, if he gets a sixth title, that's matching Jordan right there mm-hmm. in, in this era. We know, we know Federer has dominated the competition. And it's kind of a parallel because at the end of his career, when everyone thought he was done, he's starting to win championships again. So these are some special guys we've seen in our lifetime. So, It's more now about where does Tom Brady fit in sports history versus where he fits in the NFL all time right now. Vinny, good to talk to you this morning. Uh, We are on Super Bowl week, and uh, you know what? Things are going to start getting closer and closer. We look forward to next Sunday. But when you look at it on paper right now, the two teams, does Philadelphia actually have a fighter's chance in this contest against the dynasty Patriots that look like they're on the verge to win another one? 
they do have a chance. They're just going to have to score almost every time they have the ball in this game. And that's going to be difficult, but we've seen the Eagles put up some big point totals in a lot of games. They're used to actually blowing out teams, so that Vikings game was similar to a lot of games they played this season. But in this one, they got to keep pushing it. Nick Foles has got to be just as superb in making those difficult throws downfield. They've got to get every ounce of their running game from JHI. They have to just keep pushing the pedal. And I think that's one thing that Doug Peterson does. And some people have compared him to Andy Reid, but he's completely different in terms of how he approaches the game. He's going to step on a team's throat more. I mean, that's why you see this blowout wins and the ability to just keep throwing even when you think the game is in hand for the Eagles. And that's an important attribute if you're going to try to upset the Patriots. That certainly is. Now, Vinny, I know you're a, you're a football writer for Sporting News, but you also dial into the, the fantasy angle as well. If, if I'm looking at Brady options and of course the game plan changes and, and you know we the, we're trying to figure out what the Patriots are going to do and the prop bets are going to be coming out a little bit later on in the week but when you're evaluating Tom Brady targets and you have guys like Gronk, Amendola, uh, Hogan uh, where where is the order in your opinion of where's the most value of the guy that's going to get the most touches on this Patriot offense if we are looking at props and looking at the fantasy angle of the actual game coming up on Sunday? Well, I think Danny Amendola is a good place to start, but I will caution with that one. Is you have Patrick Robinson on the other side. He's been playing very well slot corner, and he's better than uh, what Amendola has faced at that position all season. So they might go away from him a little bit. They'll still try to get him matched up on linebackers, but the downside there is that Nigel Bradham on that same side is one of the better cover linebackers, so we're going to take Amendola out of the equation. I know he's been Mr. Playoff or Danny Playoff or whatever Rob Gronkowski calls him, but <laughs> I'm going to go with Gronk more in this one because you look at some big games there. Travis Kelsey went over 100 yards against the Eagles. You had uh, Jordan Reed when he was healthy. Remember him? Oh, <laughs> had yeah. a few big games for the Redskins against the Eagles. So, yeah, so long ago when those guys were around and you look, Kyle Rudolph was able to get in the end zone on uncovered play last week, so this Eagles team, I think the numbers against the tight end is a little bit skewed. So I start with Gronk, and then the next changeup I go is to one of the backs in the passing game. I would favor James White again. We know what he did in last year's Super Bowl. The Eagles have very similar problems to the Falcons in trying to cover backs. We saw last week with Jarek McKinnon. He was pretty much the only source of offense. So Lewis or White in the backfield, I think, would be the option uh, 2A and 2B there. Well, you know, uh, I think this off season is going to be very, very interesting uh, for for reasons that you know there have been some guys who number one have been hurt, so we don't get to see a Carson Wentz, we don't get to see Deshaun Watson play. Uh, obviously, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. We see these these guys who didn't get to you know perform, and it, and it brought other names up. So you look at a Case Keenum where he might go, and then of course, if we're looking at uh, 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 Nick Foles, then then then. What is this going to look like? Are these coveted guys uh, within organizations that say, okay, well, uh, did they overachieve? Is this is this in a large enough sample size, for instance, to see if this guy would be our starter? Uh, you've got Eli Manning, depending on what you know where he's going to go, if he if he indeed stays. Don't you think there's a little bit of a carousel that is that is going to be very busy, maybe even a little busier than normal this year? Yeah, you're exactly right, and uh, it's going to be two tiered here. First, it's going to start with the domino. A free agency and Kirk Cousins is going to be the number one and then you'll have to see what happens then probably with Alex Smith next and then Case Keenum Sam Bradford slash Teddy Bridgewater see where the Vikings go or don't go with any of those guys and maybe those guys all go in the pool so you start there you can't forget about Eli as you said and Tyrod Taylor and if Blake Bortles becomes available it adds to a lot of that, but then you have the next tier is all these quarterbacks that could go in the first round. You have uh, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, Josh Allen, uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, maybe down to Mason Rudolph and Baker Mayfield, all in the first round. So that is just a lot to process and a lot of options for these teams. Do we go recycled? Are we in position to go with a guy that can help us win now? Or do we want to rebuild and just try to go for that real franchise quarterback? It's interesting you brought up some of those names too, uh, like uh, Darnold, like 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 uh, uh, Rosen, and 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 when you talk about um, 
uh, sorry, Josh Allen, uh, who I thought was a really interesting story going into this, considering where he plays in Wyoming and just how he came to actually be there, which was, uh, which again, it's it's one of those American stories that kind of makes you feel all good. But it wasn't quite the season I don't think that he wanted to have. Did he hurt himself much in terms of how pros see him, or it really doesn't matter? Uh, you know, he, he's going to continue on. He's going to be a top draft pick. What about a guy like Josh Allen? I think there's a lot of parallels to Carson Wentz, but I think at the senior bowl, it might have hurt him a little bit. Maybe the arm strength was not there as people expected. And I, I really don't think much separates him where a lot of mock drafts have him going number one to down to Rudolph, who I think maybe is undervalued in this whole process when you look at all the things he's been able to do and kind of the build in athleticism he has as well. So it's going to be very close. It's going to be splitting airs. It's going to be knowing what kind of offensive system and kind of uh, overall team philosophy you have and fitting that quarterback in. Sometimes you take the guy that doesn't fit exactly what you want to do, whether you're a West Coast team or you throw the ball downfield and have a big arm or you're a team that's willing to do a little bit of zone read and all that kind of stuff. So you got you have to measure what you have, what your supporting cast is. And that's why you have guys like uh, Carson Wentz being successful right away. Team see what he can do, build around that. Same thing happened with Jared Goff. So, in some of these cases, you have to have a plan beyond just taking that guy. You mentioned with the Philadelphia offense that they have to score and, and score often, especially considering who's on the other sideline waiting to get his chance on the field as well. They had no problem against the Minnesota Viking defense that really, quite simply, didn't really show up for that conference final. Uh, what does Nick Foles have to do uh, as far as game plan for what the Patriots offer on defense? Where are the Patriots' uh, weaknesses when you're looking at some of the Eagles' strengths on offense where they could actually invade that part? Part of the uh, part of the field. Well, if I'm the Eagles, I'm going to try to run as much as possible early to see what you can get. Because Jay Guy, we know, can take over a game. He's had 200 yard games not too long ago for the Dolphins. He's seen the Patriots front a little bit in the past. He hasn't had too much success against it. But when you look at it, that's their weakness. They're not very good at stopping the run when it comes to linebackers with no Dante Hightower there. They've struggled there and. Eagles on the right side of the line with Brandon Brooks and Lane Johnson, there's really not a better combination in the NFL to run behind. So when you look at that and that center Travis Kelsey as well, that you can have some success with J.H.I. both pounding between the tackles, trying to get him outside. So they need to stay committed to a J.I. because I think he gives them the most versatility. He can do a lot of things that LeGarrette Blunt can do. But he can also do a lot of things Corey Clement can do. So if they can get him involved, get him a lot of touches, uh, I think he needs to touch the ball 25 times in this in this game to have a chance to win for Philadelphia. So good mix, pace, and balance of a conservative and aggressive for Philadelphia to keep the Patriots off balance. You know, Vinny, I think this has a setup for just being an, an engaging and entertaining game. I mean, there are years sometimes where I take a look at the, the matchup, and I can see at least from an entertainment perspective – that it may not be the fireworks that, and I'm not saying it's going to turn into a track meet, but in, in, in some respects, one is going to force the other to maybe make that happen. As you said, Philadelphia's going to have to find a way to score. I don't mind watching a game like that. So as much as it seemed like a, I don't know how David and Goliath this is, but all those, you can certainly figure out whose role is what. I think this has a potential of being a kind of an interesting game, don't you? Yeah, and when you look at the Patriots' history, most of their games are interesting. Yeah. They don't blow up teams in the Super Bowl. They make things come down to the wire. I think the one exception maybe was the Eagles game where they won by a field goal, but they were really in control of that game the first time. So when you look at that, overall, their Super Bowls have been pretty good. Money's worth it. You could have the feel of the Seattle game that, that we had in Super Bowl 49. So I, I hope for some game like that. We need something with a few defensive players, but we want a game that high 20s or early 30s on the scoreboard because – that usually makes for the best contest. We've seen that over and over again when we uh, rank the best Super Bowls that going down to last year. That That's the kind of action we want. I think the only difference from last year that I would like is a little bit more back and forth, not just a tale of two halves and uh, mm -hmm. kind of one team completely shutting down on one side of it. Now, would you be someone that occasionally goes to the Super Bowl, like the, the, the Vinny Iyer suite? You know, with uh, you walk out of the limousine, you got the the Neil Diamond uh, <laughs> shiny uh, jacket, you got a little bling going on, open shirt, like really open, like, whoa, Vinny's really, you know, do you have that kind of thing going on for you? 
if you get if you call uh, getting out of the media shuttle and having your uh, bags being sniffed by uh, well trained dogs um, and wait in line a few times, yeah, sure. Um, it's a, it's a grand entrance for sure. Going to the uh, bowels of the stadium up an elevator somewhere, yeah. I guess uh, I try to dress up for it, so that that's at least I try to look respectable. It's like the few times that you'll see me in a sports coat um, walking around this Super Bowl week, so. Looking forward to that, even though it's going to be uh, negative degrees uh, for most of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly yeah, San Diego, but yeah, I guess these days, what is? Uh, hey, Vinny, great job once again. Love having you on the show, Thanks, man. Vinny. Thanks so much for joining us today, and, and again, we'll, we'll catch up with you real soon. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. That is uh, Vinny Iyer from uh, Sporting News uh, joining us here today. and. Uh, Just become best friends. Yep. 